Wow, I just uploaded a video to Nick Wright Live. Remember this channel? This channel has been inactive for like a year now. My last video was over a year ago. So for those that don't know, this channel was my side channel just to talk about off-topic things. Any old subject I wanted to talk about. Intellectual discussions, deep discussions, it doesn't matter. Um, and I just kind of stopped using it like a year and a half ago. Uh, so what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to upload random daily lifting clips that I need to show my coaches, Brett Gibbs and Josh Hancock. I update them on every single workout and I usually try to get them video footage. Now that's been easy because I've just been uploading every workout here on the main channel but now we're getting to the point where there's going to be some days that are not main channel worthy. I'm using the channel for that now. Updating my coaches on lifting footage that I'm not going to use on the main channel. It's in the info box below. Subscribe if you want to check it out. Probably like one of the only things in life that I'm actually any good at. Like I'm serious like my only talent because I suck at most things is drawing, sketching, art. Not so much painting, just sketching in freehand. Anyway, uh, Ricky today brought me, or tonight I should say, he brought me some really good steak and potatoes, some high-end food. And he asked if in return I could help him freehand a giant um, infinity symbol because they don't have stencils for it at Walmart. <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job given how big this paper was and circular shapes are like really hard to get nice and even and not make them lopsided and make them symmetrical. So given that this was just freehand and going off of this piece of jewelry here, I think I did a pretty good infinity symbol. And then he wants to do some creative writing stuff in there and he's gonna take all that. But uh, yeah. I'm telling you, it looks like a simple symbol, but try it, try it. Take a big piece of paper that's like the size of a table and then try to freehand that and you'll see how annoying circular shapes are. They're so hard to get even and symmetrical. Anyway, I gotta do all my Valentine's Day shopping for tomorrow, yeah. What's up guys, boys, ladies, today's Friday, uh, you know what that means, that means This is my boy Jeremy Lowry so he's young as hell, he's like 21 years old. He's a youngin', but he's a beast. He used to train with Eric Lillybridge, in fact, in a lot of Eric Lillybridge's original lifting videos, deadlifts, squats, meets, etc. You can see Jeremy like cheering him on and hugging him after like meet, makes meet attempts and all that. Strong ass dude, and he's very, very humble. He uh, has, I've been in touch with him for some years now. Uh, we've become pretty good friends despite being geographically separated. Uh, and he's finally got a YouTube channel, man. I told him to do it. A bunch of times and he's finally doing it so uh check him out that's jeremy lowry powerlifting the link is in the info box below click on it subscribe tell him i sent you he's a good dude he deserves it and uh as you guys can see here based on uh the last video shout out and then this shout out i'm gonna try to give more and more smaller channels some limelight and attention now and uh maybe even on instagram too just trying to get the word out for people that are like legitimately great lifters and deserve some limelight and attention so february 20th february 20th between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., the Chipotle and Johnson Rhode Island will be donating half their proceeds to the North Kingstown Animal Shelter. Uh, so if you want to support that, go to Johnston, Rhode Island, go to their Chipotle between 5 and 9 p.m., and when you order, simply tell them it's for the animal shelter, and they'll take 50% of that profit and send it right to the animal shelter, which is good. Uh, help out some of these puppies and avoid them from getting killed. So just letting you guys know that. That's put up on my boy Dan Mackler. And I am heading off to Enac in Arctic West Warwick to hit some bench today. You know what's funny, man? I was thinking about it the other day. It is not super common to see a full powerlifter, meaning all three lifts, who is good, like who has a really good total, be exceptional at bench. I follow a lot of powerlifters who are great with the squat and the deadlift and their bench is a weak point for them. Um, which is fine because the squat and the deadlift are the bigger lifts so they're gonna make most of your total anyways. But it's interesting. You know like Candido, his bench is about the same as mine I think but his squat and his deadlift murder mine. Um, Eric Lillybridge on the elite level, he's squatting over a thousand pounds in the gym and pulling over 900 pounds. But I think his bench is like 550. Which, it, don't get me wrong, it's a beast bench. But just compared to his squat and his deadlift, you would think it would be like over 600. Uh, so it's just kind of interesting, and I think that's why Josh Hancock and Brett Gibbs impress me so much as lifters. Because not only do they have crazy squats and deadlifts, they actually have really strong benches. Josh Hancock's 163 pounds. 
benching about 400 pounds, which is insane. And Brett Gibbs is my weight, and he's pause repping 465 with ease, which is just insane. I just want to hit that 405 bench, guys. That is my biggest goal. The day I hit that 405 bench will be the biggest accomplishment in my career on a personal level, and I'm looking forward to it, and I want it. I'm hungry for it. So today we did more tempo benching. You've seen it before. Three second negatives, five sets, five reps. Uh, three Mississippi count on every single rep. And uh, the first time you saw me do this, I did 205. The second week I did this was 215. And this week we did uh, 230. And it was one of those days where like it felt like absolute crap while I was under the weight. And I, I felt like I was just like, you know, not pushing it easily, not pushing it smoothly, struggling. Um, but then I looked back at the footage and it was moving nice and smooth. It was moving absolutely fine, clean as whistle. So uh, the workout was a success. Um, maybe I just feel like crap because of allergies or something, sinus pressure. But it's kind of funny when that happens. You're like, damn, I feel weak today. Then you film it and it looks like normal. So that's good. 230 for the three second tempos was a success. Tempos are a lot of work, man. I mean, you're not using heavy weight, but those three second negatives exhaust you quickly. But they're good. They really help you get used to this, the movement, the path of movement in the bench press. So you can apply it to your normal bench press. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. One more. Yes. Ready? One, two, three. Up. Oh. Yep. Thank you. Ready? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bah. Easy. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bah. Bah. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Bah. So on my Instagram at Nick Wright NWB, I made a post today and somebody underneath it, shout out to I am steady lifting, asked me, Nick, from your last video, what is your dream car? Then what is your car of choice under 100K? And then what is your choice under 30K? And that's actually a fun question, man. I could talk cars all day, I love it. So I figured I'd answer this one around the video. Um, so my dream car ultimately is the Lamborghini Murcielago, and I know they're out of date now. They stopped making them in, I wanna say 2010. Um, but man, that was the first Lamborghini I ever fell in love with. Keep in mind, I got my license in like 2007 or eight, so they were like, they were like the current times Aventador back then. Um, and I love them, they're so sleek and flat and low to the ground. But they're expensive now, man. They're like, this, they were originally like a $300-ish thousand dollar car new, but since they stopped making them because they were like the most highest demanded Lamborghini back then, they're up to like five or 600,000 now pretty regularly for like a 2010. That's crazy. Um, if I was gonna spend that much, I'd probably honestly just go with the Aventador because you can see a lot of inspiration from the Mercilago in the Aventador and they're like the same price, brand new. My dream car for under 100K actually is what I've been looking into right now. Uh, it's a possibility I could buy one this spring, but I might just wait until next year just for the hell of it. Um, but that would be Mercedes SLK AMG. They're harder to find, but ooh, they are sexy. It's a V8. It's a, a two-door coupe with a hard top drop top. So it's a convertible, but when you put the top up, it's hard, so it looks like a real coupe, and then it has a panoramic roof. Things are beautiful. Oh, they're sexy. I'm looking into that, um, but obviously I want to get this real estate bought first before I buy any car. And uh, if I do buy a car, I want to buy it outright. I don't want to finance it. It's cheaper in the long run. And then my favorite car under 30K, you know what? It's probably gonna be a Nissan 350Z, man. I've always, always loved those cars. Always wanted one as a teenager. Still love them to this day. I don't like the 370s, I like the 350s. Um, they're sexy. Those things are awesome. So that'd probably be my favorite for under 30K. Guys, that is my Instagram, Nick Wright NWB. It's my favorite social media besides YouTube, so follow me. Pretty please.